Okay, 27. I'm guessing a lot of you jumped straight here. This one is a doozy. It is what I call a eureka problem. It's not a problem you're going to find in your math book. It's one you just kind of have to have a eureka moment and figure out what they're wanting you to do. Hopefully, uh, some of the earlier problems weren't too time consuming, so you're able to give some more time and thought to this one because I, I think it's going to need it. We start with 64x squared minus 16a plus 4b times x plus ab equals 0. In the given equation, a and b are positive constants. The sum of the solutions to the given equation is k times 4a plus b, where k is a constant. What is the value of k? <sighs> Shoo wee. Yeah, this it's just it's it always kind of shocks me how much the difficulty value goes up in these last few questions on the PSAT in particular. The SAT kind of has a gradual ramp up, but the PSAT just goes, all right, here's everything you've been preparing for. And then this and they just blindside you with it. Let's get started tackling this monster. 64x squared minus, all in parentheses, 16a plus 4b times x plus ab equals 0. First things first, there is a greatest common factor here in this 16a plus 4b. And I'm going to take that out. So I'm going to write that in red. I'm going to take that out. 4 goes into everything in there. So the 64x squared stays the same, but I'm pulling out a 4, which leaves behind 4a plus b, because 4 times 4a is 16a, and then 4 times b is, oh, didn't quite draw it, 4 times b is 4b. That x stays out there, and then we have plus ab equals 0. Now I'm going to get rid of this 4. I'm going to divide everything here by four, all three of these terms, and then the zero. Okay, so that leaves me with 64x squared divided by four is 16x squared. That four cancels out that, so I am just left with 4a plus bx plus, and then I have, uh, you can write this as just ab over four. It's the same as one fourth times ab. ab over four, same difference. And then zero divided by four is just zero. The reason that I did this, and this is why I call it a eureka moment, you have to go like, oh, oh, is look at our goal. Are all these kind of problems where you can't really see the path, the goal is important. And here the goal is that the sum is going to be equal to k times 4a plus b. And if you look over here, 16a plus 4b, they want you to have that eureka moment of, wait a minute, those are both divisible by 4, and if I pull 4 out, I'm going to be left with 4a plus b. And that's also in the goal where I'm trying to get to. That has to mean something, right? Like I said, eureka moment, it's not going to be in your math book. So the, so the next part of this sort of eureka thing you want to have is, if we're talking about the sum of the solutions to an equation, what would that look like for just any equation? What would the sum of solutions to any equation, any quadratic equation, equation here, what would it look like? All right, for that, we're going to go to the quadratic formula. So that is normally written as if I have the ax squared plus bx plus c, then it's negative b plus or minus square root, and it goes on from there. Just that's how it's normally written. I'm going to use capital letters here because we've already got a lowercase a and b over there, and this is going to get really confusing really quickly. Don't know why they chose a and b, just to make it harder on you. So we're going to call this capital AX squared plus capital BX plus capital C. So the quadratic formula says it would be negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2 times A. Now that plus or minus represents the two answers. So one solution to any quadratic equation would be negative b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the other would be negative b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So our goal, remember, is the sum of the solutions, adding them together. So let's do a generic for all quadratics. What would happen if I added together these two solutions? So first, our first solution would be negative b plus 
square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then our second one is negative b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And what would what would the uh, sum of those be? Well, these are fractions. They have the same denominator. So we would keep the same denominator and we're going to add the numerators together. So I'm going to reorder them first. I'm going to put those two negative b's together up front. So I have a negative b plus a negative b. And then I'm going to put these two on the back. First, I have the positive b squared minus 4ac, and then I have the negative square root of b squared minus 4ac. My handwriting is getting so bad. This has been a long recording session <laughs> doing all these questions for this module. All right, so these two, even though they are complicated looking, they're going to cancel out. They are identical except one is positive and one is negative, so they cancel out, they're gone. Aren't you glad of that? I know I am. Like a plus five minus five, plus a million minus a million, they cancel out. And what's left is negative b plus a negative b. Well, that's just a negative 2b over 2a. Well, I can get rid of those twos, they cancel out. I am left with negative b over a. So, what that is saying that for any quadratic equation, if I find the solutions and then add them together, I will get a negative version of this middle, middle coefficient divided by or over the uh, first coefficient, negative b over a. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of this that we just used to solve that or to figure that out, that it's negative b over a, and I'm gonna zoom back in. I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna write sum is equal to negative b over a. And this is the big B, big A. So in this case, b would be negative four times a, negative four a plus b. And my a would be 16. Okay, so the sum of the solutions is gonna be equal to that. So let's plug those in and see what we get. All right, so negative b. Well, this b is a negative already, so a negative negative makes it a positive. So just 4a plus b on top, and the a on the bottom, there's my a, capital A. Remember why they picked a and b, just to make it confusing for the poor students. Let's have multiple a's and b's in the same problem on the last one that's already confusing. That's a great idea. All right, so again, that first capital A, that first coefficient is going to be 16. Now that is the sum of the solutions, but we were told up here that the sum of the solutions is k times 4a plus b. You're like, what? What? I'm so close. I'm so close. The one says divided by 16 and this says multiplied by k. Another way of dividing, you can say, is multiplying by one over that number. So if I want to say divided by five, that is the same as multiplying times one fifth. So in this case, divided by 16 is the same as multiplying by 1 16th. And praise be, that is our final. Woo hoo, okay, we are there. Thank goodness, there we have our 4a plus b and 4a plus b. Those are gonna cancel out on either side if we divide by 4a plus b and we are left with 1 16th equals k. And that is our answer. That's it. k is 1 16th. I, uh, personally, frankly, I think that problem is kind of evil. Again, it is not a problem you are going to see in your math books. I, I can't imagine you're going to see anything like that in your math books. It really is just a eureka problem that... I hope it's not even a multiple choice. So you can't even like try and test to figure it out that way. It really is. They're just testing if you have that sort of eureka moment and figure out a solution to this thing. And so I'm sorry you have to deal with that. But hey, at least you're done, right? You're done. Woohoo!
be sure to head over to my stores on Spreadshop and Etsy for math-related merch, worksheets, classroom decor, and more. And if this was helpful or useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.